Continuing on with our chapter two analysis and looking at these same transactions we looked at in chapter one, only looking at journal entries. Here we have transaction seven, which is a payment on account. Remember on account means to be paid later. So in this case, we Smart Touch Learning are paying for a transaction that we got earlier and didn't pay for at the time. Remember we had office supplies we purchased in transaction three and we had an account payable that we created. Remember accounts payable is an account especially for that purpose. It's an account we have for when we buy something and we're gonna pay for it later. So again, start with cash, do cash first. If there's cash in a journal entry, do it first. That's a good way to, uh, to work your way through these journal entries. So here's the credit to cash for 300. And then obviously, because we're crediting cash 300, we have to be debiting accounts payable 300. There's no other way the journal entries is gonna work. We're gonna decrease accounts payable 300 accounts payable has a natural credit balance so you can see on november 3rd we had 500 in the account and then here we're on the 21st debiting 300 to the account functionally decreasing accounts payable and and a lot of students will have trouble with that but it really is just a matter of we don't owe 500 anymore we just paid 300 dollars, and so we have to decrease the account 300 leaving 200 in the account next transaction transaction eight here we're gonna collect 2,000 from, from a client from transaction five. Remember in transaction five, we sold services for 3,000 and then we created accounts receivable for 3,000. So here's our cash part of the transaction, debit cash 2,000. Again, this is cash received. And so when we receive an asset, that asset increases with a debit. In this case, accounts receivable is the other side of the journal entry, which again makes sense because it's an, an accounts receivable is an asset that's decreasing. We're going to decrease it with a credit, and you can see that happening in the accounts receivable T account. We started with a balance of three thousand, and we're decreasing it by two thousand. The same thing with cash. You can see the increase in cash two thousand from this November twenty second transaction. Transaction nine: payment of cash dividend on November twenty fifth the payment for cash dividends. Dividends are on our T-chart with the natural debit balance. But here I would start with cash. Always start with cash if you can. If you don't want to, obviously you don't have to, but I think it's helpful because you're gonna see cash so many times. Cash is gonna be the most common account you see in transactions in chapter two. And so if you, if you get really good at, with cash, then you're gonna see these journal entries are gonna to start to be a little easier. Here we're going to debit, we're crediting cash 2000. You can see the effect on the T account also, cash going down. And dividends, again, dividends have a natural debit balance. And so we're increasing dividends. Here's the increase for 5000. Now there's two worksheets that, are, that you can do at this part, worksheets two and three. Worksheet two is really a review worksheet. It has a little more specificity in terms of the length of time for the assets. It talks about things like current assets and current liabilities, non-current assets and non-current liabilities. The thing to remember when you, when you do that is a current asset is an asset that's gonna be used up in less than 12 months. A liability that's current is gonna be paid in less than 12 months. And so that might be one of those worksheets that you're not really sure about until you look at the answers, but that's okay. The most important worksheet here is worksheet three, however. Worksheet three is your first opportunity to do journal entries. And I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to start doing journal entries and start preparing journal entries. Even if you look at that, and let's say you print worksheet three and you just are totally lost, which a lot of students are lost when they first start journal entries. Try the first entry, just try it. And if you're not sure, then look back at transaction one because the first transaction on your worksheet three looks a lot like transaction one. But don't look at all of them. I want you to try each transaction on, on worksheet three, try each one separately. Don't just look at the answers, don't just look at the textbook and kind of copy. I want you to try to tax your brain to figure out how to do these journal entries. Eventually you will get it, but it is a matter of you putting that effort in, trying and trying and trying until you eventually get it down.